Hello YouTubers, Ram55 here and I'm back with another episode of Trains and t tonight we're going to show you exactly what I've been experimenting with with uh, AI Trains. In this next segment we're going to have them come from the staging yard which is over here on the south end of the layout around this curve and up into the yard as we described before but I wanted to show you exactly what the AI is going to be doing. So ordinarily the switches as you can see are aligned for the main line so they do not go into the yard but the AI train is going to throw this switch which will automatically change the one at the far end as well to go into the yard. This trigger will then kick in slowing him down to 15 miles an hour. He's going to bypass this first yard track and enter the second yard track. That means this switch here will get thrown as will be its counterpart down at the other end and that will make a complete circuit but I wanted to show you the spacing on some of the track marks. So let's go down here. These are the ones that uh, the AI is going to use. The first one will be this one right here. You can see I put it all the way down toward the end of this yard lead as close to this uh, ladder track as possible. And that way when the AI train comes up, he doesn't go all the way to this mark. He stops approximately two of these yellow boxes short. So he's going to stop somewhere over in this vicinity right here. He's going to wait five seconds and then he's going to proceed to this mark right here, which is, I call it the yard lead. And I wanted to show you the spacing on that. Now again, he's going to stop about two boxes short, which means he's going to stop right in this area right here. One of the problems I ran into is if you put this signal right here too close to this switch, when these trains come out here and try to back up and go, say, couple onto some cars, which will happen later, this switch will be red and be and there it's red because the, the cars you want to switch to or connect to are in that block and so it shows an occupied block and a red signal and the AI train will not pass that so when what I'm trying to do now is get these uh, locomotives to come out this way and stop short of this signal right here that way they don't have that conflict when they back up this way so I wanted to get you uh, show you the spacing of this mark here so after he goes to the track mark up here in the yard. He comes back down here, out this way, to this mark right here, backs up, and then he will proceed to this mark here in the middle of the uh, top row, the top track in the yard, stops here, and then proceeds. So I just wanted to show you how that was set up. So let's proceed to the... Um, scenario and um, to the session and I'll show you how that works. What you do the CNO the CNO now I'm going to put this on pause and here's the commands. It's basically wait for 10 seconds after you start the session. Navigate to yard 2 north. That's one of the track marks in the yard. Once it gets there, it stops and waits for 10 seconds. Navigate to the yard lead north. Wait for 5 seconds. Navigate to yard 4. And then wait for 5 seconds. And then drive to the yard pocket north. Now the reason I'm doing this is on the route that I'm designing that's still a long way from being done. I want AI trains to come from a portal, drive to a yard, disconnect from the train that they just brought to the yard, and then go to a track waiting, or a, a locomotive waiting area. In my case, it'll be a round table where the engines can get service, they can uh, do whatever they need to do, and then the yard switcher comes in, breaks up the train that was just brought in, and um, this is simulating that happening. So just imagine that this train is coming in off a portal. It's going to drive to the yard, and then I want it to go to a place and just get out of the way and wait. Um, the CNO is this train right here. It is simply a locomotive and a, and a caboose. I didn't want to have any switching or anything like that. I just want to have them operate, go out to a certain spot, and then see if I can get the uh, AI train to do what I want. So again, I'm going to put the... Um, keep the junction overlays on so you see the numbers and the switch which way they're going. 
Uh, but you can see those invisible track marks and the in invisible speed limits are no longer visible. But again, that AI train is going to come down to a spot, stop right about here, wait a few seconds, proceed out to a spot over here, back up, over here, and then into the pocket. So that's the basic route that this train is going to be uh, taking. And we're going to be watching it from over his shoulder so we can actually see the signals and how they change as we go through. So we'll take it on pause now and this train will proceed. And again, I'm not operating this train. This is all under AI control. So we waited 10 seconds. Now he's off to yard to the north track mark. speed limit of 40 miles an hour. You can see that our first signal for the converging route is green, so we are clear to uh, pass this junction right here. Looking up ahead, we can see that our uh, number four signal is green, telling us the next signal is also green, so we're able to go. Now this is the class two, and I think that's actually backwards. The, the lower signal should be green and the top one red, and they have it just the opposite. I'm not sure why that is. Once we pass it, you can see those signals have turned red. You can also see that once this junction here was thrown, our speed limit up here is now 15 miles an hour. And when these switches get thrown, their opposite counterparts on the other end are also thrown. Makes it convenient for the AI. He's going to proceed now at 15 miles an hour to that spot that we talked about. If he couldn't see all, a path all the way through the yard, he would proceed at a much slower pace. He would eventually get there, but at a slower pace. Now he's going to come up to a spot, I think right about here, and stop. And wait five seconds. That's right about correct. It's about two blocks away from where that track mark is. Now then he's going to throw this switch after five seconds. He's going to have to throw this one as well, but he won't do that until I think he gets past this switch. Oh, he did it. So he's going to proceed at a nice rate of pace up to that track mark, which is up here, and then stop. Again, he should be stopping somewhere in this range right here, based on where we put that track mark. That gets him clear of this switch. He's going to wait five seconds and then back up. And now you can see he's set all these switches correctly, including this one, so we can get to that track mark that's in the middle right here. Once the AI train gets past the switch, they go back to their nominal direction. And for that first switch right here, that's set to uh, keep trains on the main line. Now once he gets out to this track mark, which is right in the middle of the track there, he's going to stop and throw that last switch. And then proceed into the pocket. And that's exactly what I want the AI trains to do the route that I'm designing and building. I want them to bring a train into the yard, disconnect from it, and then go off to a servicing area for the locomotive. So that's exactly what this simulation has tried to do. So those are the commands for AI to get that to happen. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed it and hope that was valuable to you. If you have any questions or comments, if you have any more tricks and tips for how to operate trains better, please let me know. This is a learning experience for me. I hope you uh, learned a little bit of uh, what I did through trial and error and we'll see you next time.